Yes, so this is a joint work with my former postdoc, uh, Dr. Guo Lo, my former uh, PC student and postdoc, Tang Fei Liu, and my current PC student, Cha Jie Chen, and, and, and De Huang. So I, I misspelled the World Fields Institute. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, how come I cannot turn pages? Hold on. Hold on. Mm, okay, now it works. So, so, uh, for, for the audience in this uh, uh, workshop, I don't need to say too much. Uh, Idrit Tidis already gave a very excellent uh, survey for the topic. So uh, we're concerned about 3D oil equation, it's given by this equation. And the, uh, with moon initial data, the question whether or not it can blow up in finite time, or we have global uh, regularity. So we know that for 3D uh, oil equation, that the, uh, the vorticity uh, has a water stretching term, which is absent in two-dimensional case. So the right-hand side, which is a non-local nonlinear term, so but formally scale like a quadratic nonlinearity, respect to omega. And as we will see that the, uh, the, the transport term actually played a very important role to destroy potential uh, finite time singularity. So there's a balance between the transport term and the water stretching term. But it's very hard to capture this uh, subtle cancellation if using a, a, a global energy type of estimate. So uh, this is a brief review, uh, uh, it we talk about this. So the, there's a well-known Bill Cattle-Mida non-block criteria, or if we blow up, or TST had to blow up in, in this fashion. And our work was inspired by the early work of uh, Constantin Stefan and Mida, 1996, where they pointed out that if the TST vector has some regularity in the sense that the gradient of TST vector, uh, the l infinite norm is integral in time in L2, uh, in a region that contains the maximum vorticity in the order one region, and plus the assumption that the velocity does not blow up, then you can also exclude blow up. So together with my former postdoc, uh, Jen Deng, and my former PhD student, Sing Wei Yu, 2005, so we develop a, a more Lagrangian point of view, a Lagrangian point of view, by following a small uh, a water line segment that we basically allow the velocity to blow up, but in a way that is integrable, is maximum, velocity field along this water line segment is integrable in time. And also the regularity uh, of the vortex vectors we replaced by the curvature regularity of the uh, water filament along this uh, segment. So I, I, I mentioned that there was a very recent exciting result by uh, Tarek Elgindi. So this is for, for a C alpha kind of initial vortex and uh, we raised more alpha and, 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 and there's no swore. Okay, there has been a lot of uh, work for people so trying to search for singularity numerically. It's a long but incomplete list of people who has worked in this area. Uh, but we will say that the, well, most of the previous uh, effort has been inconclusive. So uh, uh, I, I, in my early work with uh, Professor Rowley, we, we kind of reconsider the uh, two in the parallel waters, two initial condition by Bokker, then we found that it only seems to have a double exponential uh, growth, but doesn't seem to lead to finite time blow up. So in collaboration with my former post of World Law in 2000, published in 2014, so this is, uh, so we, we, uh, we did, uh, discover a, another type of a potential blow up scenario that happened is in the as a symmetric 3D oil equation in this setting, it is periodic in Z as a boundary, solid boundary R to one, so they find a no flow bound recognition, periodic in Z. And the flow is, uh, uh, is, is a, has an odd symmetry along the Z axis for the uh, angular velocity, angular vorticity, and angular stream function. And there was a stagnation point right here on the symmetry plane and the XY plane. So the singularity occur right at this corner. It's not a real corner, but at this uh, dividing plane, but occur at the boundary. So it is a stagnation point. So the, the stabilizing effect of the, the transport uh, minimize at this point and, and also because this singularity does not move make it much easier to design a, a effective adaptive mesh uh, strategy to resolve it uh, with a very high with many digits of accuracy. So we basically solve this, uh, uh, we formulate as a symmetric 3D oil equation by introducing a change of variable u1 which is the angular velocity field divided by uh, r, r is uh, the polar coordinate in the uh, xy direction so uh, omega one defines similarly, Poseidon defines similarly. 
and as has been shown by by uh, previous uh, uh, worker that that if you say that by Zhang Liu and and Jia Cheng Wang that if the three D oil equation or nice equation has smooth solution then the u theta, omega theta, psi theta has to be an off function of r. So this has a removable singularity. So we consider a smooth initial condition, but only with a swap. But the other set, the other velocity field to be zero initially. So the swap playing a very important role. It's unlike the, the uh, case that Elgindi studied that where there's no swap. In fact, you can see if there's, if there's no swap initially, so you say you want to be zero, you just, I mean, you say that goes zero. So the vorticity, the omega one, the scale vorticity, angular vorticity, has a conservation. They have a maximum principle. So that cannot have, a, it's now known that for asymmetric 3D oil without war, it does no blow up. So we, we, we for this uh, uh, special class of uh, initial boundary condition with a lot of symmetry, we observe the maximum vorticity actually blow up very, very fast and has a scale collapse very, very fast. So of the order, this uh, blow up exponent for the uh, maximum vorticity is like a 2.4579. So it certainly violated the Bill-Kettle-Meida condition. So the driving mechanism seems to uh, occur, uh, the boundary, the presence of the boundary seems to play a very important role. So we, we, in that same paper, we also uh, derive a, a one dimensional model at the boundary, I to one by calling u1 uh, square to be the, uh, the temperature theta, it's not the angular theta, and then uz, the, 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 the axial velocity we call u. So when you restrict the, uh, the 3D order equation, the systematic order equation at r equal one, so this is exact. So, but we need to approximate the BSR law. So if we assume that the angular vorticity is kind of constant, it can extend it from r equal to one all the way to r equal minus infinity, and then the BSR law will actually reduce to u sub z with the Hubert transform of uh, vorticity. It's vorticity along the, uh, uh, it's the angular vorticity, okay, with this uh, R condition. So, so you can get this one dimensional model, which is exact on the dynamic equation, but you approximate the BSR law by this. Uh, and this also has been used in many other models, like the, the Gregorian model, for example. So this 1D model is, uh, and the 3D oil equation seem to share many similar property, including symmetry property, and it's even scaling sim uh, property. So recently, with, uh, uh, th th three years ago, with uh, uh, Kiselev and Sverik and, and Kiselev's former two postdocs, Chai and Yao, so, and, and we have been able to prove this one dimensional model actually develop a finite time singularity by exploiting the, uh, the symmetry condition. So, so since our, our paper published in 2014, there's been a sequence of uh, theoretical results that follow up uh, with this type of, uh, uh, this, this kind of uh, initial boundary condition. So in particular, Kisilev and Sverik proof actually published in the same year that the, uh, for this, the same type of initial boundary condition, uh, the 2D oil equation, we know the 2D cannot blow up, but the gradient of uh, what this say actually can actually reach double exponential growth, which is the, the maximum possible growth rate. So, so there was a, uh, uh, yeah, there's a, 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 some other work that I, I mentioned here. So, so you, some, so the boundary condition all play a very important role here. This is like a, a more singular uh, patch, like a, a, a more singular water patch kind of uh, setting. They also develop on a time singularity. So the main focus of my talk, uh, part, the first part of the talk, I want to see if we can actually rigorous prove the, uh, the, the, the numerical evidence that we observed in, back in 2014, that the actually uh, the 3D oil equation will actually develop a finite energy singularity from a smooth initial condition with finite energy. So we look for a, a computer assisted uh, approach. So first of all, if you assume that the numerical evidence also supported that the blow ups seem to be self similar in the R and Z variable, so if you substitute a, a omega one have a cell similar profile into the three D asymmetric Euler equation, you find we find that the uh, it is a quality that have same scaling as a two D Bousinet equation. If you made the same change of variable, u one square equal to theta omega one equal to omega, right? So this extra term from the Euler equation actually asymptotically small, so that's not really contribute to the blow up. So then we will turn our focus to study the two D Bousinet uh, Bousinet equation and turn our focus in, into whether or not there was a cell similar blow up for the 2D uh, Bousinet equation. 
So we'll use a, a, a technique that I first learned from George Papanikolaou when I was a poster at Quran and back in 1987. So they use a so-called so, so dynamic rescaling approach to compute a finite time blow up, self similar blow up on the Nina Zutinger equation. And this approach further de later developed by Frank Murr and other people as a, a, a core modulation technique to study a finite time blow up on the Nina Zutinger equation, dispersive equation, and, and, and many other application. So the idea is very simple. You, 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 when you're trying to study the finite time blow up, you're trying to rescale the profile so that it converts to a cell similar profile in the steady state. So you rescale the time into a finite time singularity into an infinite time, become a steady state. So you stretch the x coordinate so that you, the, instead of have a focusing blow up, you want to keep the profile of, uh, of order one support. And then you want to damp, put, put a damping term in the omega so that the amplitude will be remain all the one. So, so the, the three scaling parameter, so the damping parameter is C omega C theta plus the scaling parameter in, in the space had to satisfy a linear uh, relationship in order to be equivalent to the original uh, Euler or, 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 or Bussner's equation. So once they satisfy this uh, uh, rescaling, uh, this linear con constraint, so it still does two degree freedom we can choose. So you can, one can show that the, uh, uh, if, you, if theta and omega are the solution of the original 2D business system, and then by we scale the solution in this way with this capital C theta, C omega, CL defined by this way, and C, little c theta, C omega, CL had to satisfy the linear relationship and also plus additional normalization condition. And the time will be rescaled by this fashion. So, so it, this is the rescale times. If you map back to the physical time, so if we can show that the, uh, the dynamic scaling equation as t go to infinity, the rescale time go to infinity, that this, uh, the c omega, the little c omega coefficient converts to a limit to a constant, which is negative. That means you have a focusing blow up. And that will translate that you have a finite time blow up when you map back to the physical space. So that is the, the technique that we would like to, to use. So, so, so the, the, let me give you a, a high, high, old, high level picture of what the strategy that we are going to adopt. So we basically consider a, a, a dynamical system as a dynamic variable given by vorticity and, and the, the temperature theta. So you have a nonlinear Ryan sign and local Ryan sign. This is the original Bussner's equation, but you, do, you, you put it in the dynamic scale uh, formulation. So, so numerically, because the, the, after we do the dynamic scaling, the profile becomes very smooth. So you can actually use a high order numerical method to solve very accurately to approximate steady state. Approximate steady state will be denoted by u bar. That means that the residual, we call f evaluate at u bar, it is very small. You can make it very small by using a high order method with a large number of meshes. So then you can, you can, there's something you can control by your numerical resolution. Then the, the whole idea is that we're trying to then construct a perturbation analytically to control the perturbation so that the sum of the two. So the numerical solution have only finite resolution, but you, have to, you can interpret it using a, a continuous basis into the whole, whole space. So you have the, the control of the U-bar. You have, you, you, this is at your disposal, U-bar. So we need to con construct a U-tutor so that the sum of the two will become the exact solution of the dynamic scaling equation. So you can divide the equation for U-tutor, even by this. You can have a linearized term, Linearized around U bar. So this linearized operator is that played a very important role in the in the stability analysis. And there's a quadratic nonlinearity because the, the right hand side has only quadratic nonlinearity, and plus the residual that this is the error that, that we introduce uh, when we uh, construct approximate steady state. So so then so, so then the question is that uh, you, if you can somehow construct a weighted energy norm. So that is the, really the key to show that the linearized operator, this linearized, if you ignore the nonlinear term, ignore the error term, so you consider the linearized equation around this U bar, which, which is we know. Then if you can show that some energy norm, so that has nonlinear stability, based typically weighted uh, H1 norm, so you have some damping effect. So that is the, the, the stability around the, the uh, dynamic scaling profile, the cell similar profile, that there's a positive number lambda. If you can show that, that is, which is very, very difficult to show, but, but if you can do that, then you can control the perturbation by using, right, as a, using the Duhamel principle. So then using the fact that the, 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 using the same energy norm, you have an stability. So you can control the uh, perturbation by this integral. 
and you have the damping effect from the linearized operator. So you can show that if the, if the uh, initial perturbation is sufficiently small, then a, a capital A, capital A is of order epsilon, so that this uh, nonlinear, this inequality is satisfied as long as uh, A is smaller than epsilon to some, 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 to some uh, uh, coefficient, then this can be certainly satisfied. So you can use a bootstrap argument showing that if the initial perturbation are trapped, uh, are smaller, uh, contained in a small energy ball of size A, then it can never escape because uh, then once you, you reach the boundary, it has to be strictly decreasing due to the damping effect of the linearized operator. So that is really the main strategy. So we don't really need to, sh to show that there is an existence of, of a steady state. As long as you can show the perturbation remains small for all time, right? So the linear stability plus the linear stability is the key. Then you can actually show that then the, uh, you have a, a, a non-trivial uh, uh, profile that they have the, the desired scaling property was given by the u bar, so, so that you have a focusing uh, blow up. And then once you have a non-linear stability, you can also further cut off the, the u bar, where u bar the exact cell similar solution does not have a finite energy, as it has some uh, growth at, at infinity. So be, because you have a non-linear stability and the derivative of the uh, uh, u bar actually decay, so you can have a, 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 you can truncate it, the profile, the u bar have a finite, have, a, have an initial condition with compact support, have finite energy, and that still uh, will blow up in, in the finite time. So let me illustrate this strategy by, by, by applying to the HL model. So this is a joint move with my student, Jia uh, Jie Cheng and De Huang. So, so we already know by our joint work with uh, Kislev and Suarik and, 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 uh, and other collaborator that we're using an energy estimate that we can prove by contradiction that the, the HL model uh, develop a finite time singularity. But this technique unfortunately does not generalize to a 2D case, 2D or 3D and not uh, oil equation. So we, so we hope that this uh, dynamic scaling approach using uh, uh, a computer assisted approach will, will be more enable us to, to generalize it to, uh, to the original 3D oil equation. So we use the H, when the HR model as a, a test bed to see whether or not our, our technique will work. So as I mentioned that the HR model has a very similar uh, cell similar blob scaling, the CL is very close to three, uh, almost the same as the, the, the 3D as a symmetric oil equation. So then you can apply this dynamic rescaling idea to this uh, HR model. So this, uh, the, this is the rescale variable now. And with the CL, C theta, uh, C omega satisfy this linear relationship. So since, uh, since uh, theta, omega is one order is more singular than theta, the theta derivative, coupled to omega. So we differentiate the theta equation with respect to x. So we get this a couple equation now theta sub x and omega of the same order. So for this uh, 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 dynamic scaling equation, fortunately, we, we can actually guess a, a very good approximate a steady state that you can write out analytically. That that's very surprising. And with the exponent exactly c over the three, it's to the leading order. If you plug in this into the equation, and then you can see the residual, the point mass error about 0.03, that meaning that the epsilon is about 0.03, but which is not small enough for us to close the, the energy estimate. So, so we have to resort to a very highly accurate numerical method, adaptive method, a sixth order method, fourth order method, so that you can actually drive the error down, the residual error down to 10 to minus A, that will enable us to close the, the bootstrap argument. So, so now, the, it, as I mentioned, the key it is to obtain the linear stability with, a, with a, a damping effect, the lambda being positive. So then we consider the linearized equation around the, the approximate steady state omega bar theta bar sub x. So you get this uh, uh, equation. So the leading order, so you have a line, linearized term and this uh, capital N theta, capital N omega, this denote a nonlinear and a local term. So the, even at the linearized level, there's an unlocal term, right? Even by u sub x, because the u coupled omega by the Hilbert transform. And there was a, a, a residual, uh, there's an error term. So we kept the f, theta capital F omega, x denote the error term, the residual error. So I mentioned that we have a one linear relationship between the three uh, scaling parameter. So we have still two degree of freedom to choose. We, so we, there's something we call a normalization condition. So you choose the normalization condition depending on the solution at the singularity, at the singularity location, which is x equals zero. Okay. 
So then, then you can, by choosing this normalization condition, there's a reason for it. So we want to choose so that the right-hand side, the perturbation, the linear term, and the, the error term, will vanish in as high order as possible at x equals zero. Because we are going to use a singular weight to do a weighted energy estimate with a singular weight with x equal to minus uh, to the x equal to minus k power. So the more vanishing uh, order at x equals zero, the higher a uh, singular weight, high order singular weight we can we can derive, we can get more uh, damping effect, right? And also choosing this normalization condition, the perturbation that you omega sub x and theta second derivative uh, remain unchanged, remain to be zero for all time. So now look at this uh, linearized operator. So you can you can see this is a what this a this a this a local term. This is the transport term. We call stretching term, which is helping us to to, to get the damping effect. It's stabilizing. But there's also some not so good term. This the this right hand side. This has a non-local term, which has a growing effect. So at near x equals zero, actually this term about 0.5. So this is a give you a exponential growth. And there's a non-local term. That's in some non-local term, the C omega is an integral of the vorticity. Uh, and and the omega use of X related to the Hubert transform, so it is a, it is a non-local term. So yeah, and also another difficulty is that the, the, the approximate steady profile has a very slow decay. So the omega bar decay only like a minus one third, and theta sub X bar decay like a minus two third. So it's quite a slow decay at the, the far field. So so the uh, so let's first illustrate that you do a weighted uh, L2 estimate by multiply. You can, you can see that if you differentiate the equation with respect to X, so the more term you differentiate it, this stretching term gives you more damping. But differentiate also introduce many additional terms because this, is a, this product, when you take a high order duty, introduce many, many terms. So actually you cannot get a sharp estimate. So we use a, a, a single weight to, to achieve the similar effect to get the maximum damping at near X equals zero. So if you multiply x to the minus k for some positive k integer, and then you do an L2 estimate for the omega, you see that the, uh, this stretching term plus this damping term introduces a, a damping effect in D, and plus other terms that we need to estimate. So near x equals zero, so this damping term is actually equal to k plus three over four. So there's a minus sign here, so this is a damping. So you see that the higher the k, meaning the more singular the way you use, the more damping you can uh, extract from the, uh, the, the dynamic rescaling equation. But the actual damping we use is not as simple as this. You have to take into account the near field, the intermediate field, and the far field. You have to pick, pick a, a less singular way to enforce the far field uh, decay condition. So at the end, you kind of uh, uh, take a linear combination of these different single way and then optimize them so that you can get a, a damping factor A and B for the different equation. This is a variable coefficient. But you want to choose this uh, coefficient, this damping rate, so that this variable coefficient is as uniform as possible and as, as large as possible, as, as negative as possible. Right? So, but you can see that actually near x equals zero, which is give you the maximum damping, it's not very large. For the omega is my, minus 1.75. For the theta x squared is minus, minus 0.2. So meaning that even for the, the best term that you can hold for that can contribute to the, to the stability, to the damping, and you have a very small margin that you can use, but on the, but you need to control to some additional a bad term, growing term, and then local term. So you have to be extremely careful to to make sure that the stability will not uh, will not destroy this damping effect. So this, so here let me further illustrate uh, what I just say. So you have some this this the term contribute to damping, the stretching term and the damping, but this term contribute to grow, growing term energy, positive energy. So that this, but this term has no, no damping, but the equation by itself is coupled with a non-local, this non-local uh, uh, term, the use of X. And the same thing here, omega coupled with theta sub X. So this term by itself, you look at them by themselves, it, it doesn't lead to, to, to any, uh, any damping. But, it, but when they combine them together, they have cancellation. So you can use the fact that actually these two terms, and you, can consider them together, they, can, they have cancellation among each other. And also we need to use a very sharp, this uh, L2 isometry of the Hubert transform to further control the use of X. So you can, uh, with the non-local term you have to control, so you don't, you get the optimal constant here. So this one, you can go back to the omega square, weighted omega square using a, a constant, you get a one here. 
And also for, for other terms that you need to uh, control that this term, for example, use the uh, optimal hard inequality, so you can get this coefficient. So you have to be extremely careful with every coefficient so that you do not overestimate. And also you need, you need to derive an ODE if the, the C omega, one of the uh, uh, dynamic scaling coefficient. So that also offer damping when you control the, consider the couple of the ODE, uh, the time dependent ODE for C omega, couple, couple, coupled with the dynamic equation for C omega, you uh, yeah, offer additional cancellation. So with all that, you can actually uh, derive a, a linear stability and, and, and with damping. And then you can also uh, uh, work harder to, to control that. The, then you can also get a linear stability. And then at the end, you can actually prove that the, uh, in fact, that you can prove that the, uh, if it is a, a priori estimate that we can prove that as t go to infinity, actually the uh, uh, dynamic uh, uh, scaling solution will converge exponentially fast to the exact steady state. So by, by taking, a, uh, by differentiating the perturbation, we can actually show that the error will disappear. The epsilon, if you differentiate in time, this is also a technique that Alguindi used in, in his analysis. Okay, so now, now once we have this uh, uh, result, uh, we obtain this result for the, for the model equation, we like to generalize it to the uh, 2D business equation and potentially 3D uh, uh, asymmetric Euler equation. But then we encounter additional difficulty that we, that we do not have in the 1D problem. First of all, uh, in the 1D, we differentiate with respect to X, we get a two by two system. But now for 2D, you have to differentiate with respect to Y, you get a three by three system. Right? In, in, in 1D, we use quite, a, ex, uh, ex, uh, quite a, essentially this cancellation factor the Hubert transform has a very nice property, right? When, when the use of x minus use of x zero, they have a, the, the two bad terms somehow cancel each other. But that's something we do not have in the 2D problem, okay? And also in the 1D problem, we do not have this uh, transfer in y direction. The transfer in y direction in two dimension actually trying to push the singularity away from the, from the boundary, so trying to destroy the singularity, the so-called the stabilizing effect of the transport which is absent in one dimensional case. In one dimensional case, you, you kind of restrict yourself to the boundary so you can never escape. Once you're on the boundary, it will stay there forever. But in 2D, the Y transport is very destabilizing, meaning that you're trying to destroy the singularity. So, so, you, so in terms of stability, that offers a new difficulty. But inspired by the recent work by, by Alkindi and John, and, and, and that the, they observed in back in a paper in 2017, they observed that if you work on a C alpha initial data for, for omega, with alpha very small, actually the, the transport term get penalized. So then we can actually uh, by, by borrow some of the, the technique that they, they use in their study to construct a cell similar block for, the, uh, for, 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 the, for this class of uh, uh, initial data for 2D Bussens equation. So we can actually prove that for, for alpha small enough, uh, if uh, uh, actually the velocity field is a C1 alpha and what this is a C alpha, we compact support, and the same was so theta. So you have finite energy, so that would develop, to, so the problems well posed, but develop finite time singularity. But this type of singularity is very much similar, driven by the swarm, it's very similar to, to the uh, commutation idea with, with more law. So it's very different from the, uh, the 3D Euler singularity that Alkindi studied in, in, in the, without a boundary and, and without swore. So similarly for 3D asymmetric uh, oil equation, we, we under similar condition that the, the omega theta uh, in, in C, C alpha, C, comp, C alpha of compact support, and the velocity field so is a C1 alpha of compact support, and also develop a finite time singularity. So the main observation, as I mentioned due to Alkindi and John, is, is that that if, if you work on the class of uh, omega and gradient theta in the C alpha class with very small alpha, so you treat alpha as a, as a vanishingly small parameter, so the transport term get penalized, right? So the Y transport term I, I mentioned earlier is uh, very destabilizing, but then you save the day by picking alpha small enough. And then they're also making the same kind of change variable that, 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 he, that, that, that they use. So the BSR law uh, have a very nice leading order term that you can write down explicit it's like an average over the, the angular direction, right? So, so then, then we can actually construct an analytics a, a cell similar, approximate cell similar profile that has a highly anisentropic, meaning the X and Y direction are not the same order. In fact, the Y derivative of theta is much smaller than theta, the, the, the X derivative of theta, you gain a factor of alpha. So, so and also the transport get, get become very, very, 
has been penalized. So you can actually derive a leading order model for the uh, omega, the, the profile, kept the rescale omega, capital omega, it is the rescale autistic, and the eta it is rescale theta sub x, and can see it's rescale theta sub y. So you actually, the, the theta sub y equation decoupled because this term it is of order alpha smaller than theta sub x. So you only have a two by two coupled system and then you ignore the transport term. So you get a very simplified in, a system of an linear and local ODE system, which is have a very robust blow up as long for initial condition, omega and eta are positive, right? So it is very easy to prove. In fact, you can construct an analytic blow up profile, okay, uh, by choosing this profile for the linear order system. So this is exact. And if you map back to the uh, original physical space, X, X and Y space, you can see that we can recover a velocity field that quality is similar to the one that I, I, I computed with uh, for Lord back in 2014. So the driving mechanism formula singularity remain the same, but by working on this uh, C alpha class of vorticity, uh, you just make the, some of the technical difficulty uh, go away. So you basically go through the similar strategy. So you have now you have a three by three system uh, uh, using a dynamic rescaling approach. And then you, you consider the linearized model, which is the most, the linearized system, which is the most important one. You choose a normalization condition so they vanish like a quadratically near R to zero. So R is the, the radial direction. So, so then you, 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 you realize that actually the, the C equation, the, the theta so Y component actually uh, is much, um, much smaller. So the omega, and the theta sub x direction does not couple the theta sub y direction to the leading order. And then also the theta sub y equation because this perturbation and local terms very small. So essentially it's a local uh, equation. So basically all the, the major observation that we, we make in the, when the Huber transform HL model can be applied to this uh, 2D Pusnet equation and 3D asymmetric equation by considered couple equation omega and eta. Right, so all the cancellation that I mentioned earlier for the Hubert transform, you can identify a similar kind of a cancellation occur for this uh, uh, 2D system and 3D system. So at the end, you can actually derive a, a radiant energy norm, but for the 2D boost net and 3D Euler, we need to work on higher radiant norm after H3 and plus a C1 uh, norm. So at, at the end, you construct the, uh, this energy so that you have uh, uh, linear, this linear stability, you get the damping. You, the damping is not very large, but this is a finite number, one over 12 is not too bad. So you have to, to sacrifice, observe all the nonlinear and non-local term, another growing term. And then there's this nonlinear stability. Okay, this nonlinear stability. So this is a non-local term, but you have, a, you gain an alpha here. Uh, the other bad term is linearized operator, but by taking alpha very small, so it doesn't really, uh, doesn't cue this damping term. So the nonlinear term, it is also, uh, 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 that's okay because you, you have uh, because R e the energies of order uh, alpha square. So this term actually is small compared to, to the, the leading order damping term. So at the end, you can actually close the argument. You can say that as long as the initial energy is bounded by C alpha square, it will remain bounded by the same C alpha square for all time. So then you can, uh, you can actually prove this a finite time blow up. And furthermore, for the uh, 2D boost density equation, but differentiating time of the uh, perturbation, you can prove that the, 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 perturb the, the, the perturbation will converge to the exact steady state uh, as, as t equal to infinity. So you can and also converge exponentially fast because you have a, a, a damping effect, damping term here, a definite negative damping here. So that is uh, uh, the story that, that we, we have for the uh, an analysis side. And now we're now pushing very hard. We made a lot of progress trying to, to work directly with this moon initial data that we, we use for the, uh, in the computation without using this uh, CR omega uh, assumption, initial data assumption. You have to deal with all the other terms that now we can sweep under the rug. You have to deal with them head on. It is no, no free lunch. And, and now we are down, we have come up, with, especially my student, Jia Chen, he, he has uh, come up with a very uh, sharp estimate, much more complicated. You have to do a lot of additional computation to, to verify those ad additional terms, but it looks like, a, we look like a, it's quite a promising that we may be able to, to get a, a, a rigorous proof for this moon initial data with finite energy. So in the remaining uh, few minutes, uh, I want to go quickly at some of the uh, computation that we did with uh, my student, uh, De Huang. 
for the uh, for another type of uh, singularity, but occur not at the boundary, so at at, at the symmetry axis r equals zero. So so that is the one that the uh, has been people have been trying to look for. But this is the only place the now still equation can blow up for as symmetry three D now still uh, uh, due to the partial regularity result. So we consider the same type of uh, uh, SSMS 3 d all equation, okay, and, and the same setting, but with uh, an initial condition that you have to work very hard. Most of the initial, initial condition tend to, to, to try to go away, escape the, the, the blow up, because the transport has a very strong stabilizing effect. But after a lot of uh, trial and error and imposing a lot of symmetry, we finally identify a class of initial data that seems to, to give a potential finite time singularity. So we use a similar, similar type of uh, adaptive mesh requirement, uh, adaptive mesh uh, refinement strategy by mapping the, the uh, computational domain from uh, R and Z into a row and data. But because now this, this uh, uh, traveling way type of singularity has two scale, make it much more difficult to, to compute. And also the oil equations seem to develop very, very small scale very quickly. So be, and, and you have a two scale. So we need to add some vanishing viscosity to, to stabilize the computation. So by adding a viscosity, they have order uh, of this order. So the maximum Poseidon of Z is blow up like one over capital T minus T. So that, that's like a, adding a, a, a vanishing viscosity of the order capital T minus T. So this is the initial condition in U1 and omega uh, one. This is already in the late stage. And this is the cone two in the R and Z plane. So at the later times, about 10 to minus four, 1.4, 10 to minus four, you can see that this is a 3D plot and this is the, the, the zoom, zooming version of the, of the solution. This is what T is the U1. The U1 is the angular velocity, remember. So U1 is equal to U theta divided by R. This is the U omega theta divided by R. And then you can see that if you track the center, the maximum uh, position of the U1, we call it R0 and Z0, Z it looks like they develop a self-similar kind of profile, locally self-similar profile. And we call this as a tornado singularity because uh, a, the flow trying to, to sweep, uh, uh, swirling around the, the symmetry axis, uh, argue zero. And by the way, I should emphasize this is a dipole singularity. So later on I'll show you this is, it's an off function, it's function of Z. So there's one dipole, one vortex here, the another vortex swirling in the opposite direction. So the two dipole generate a flow that pushing towards the argue zero, the symmetry axis. And that's what it generates, it's a very high. Uh, and also it, in the center near argue zero, near the symmetry axis, there's a quiet regions like, a, like, the, like the inside of the tornado, you see everything's very quiet, but they're spinning very, very fast and pushing towards argue zero. So you can, you can track the contour for different time and, and for U1 omega one, and then you zoom in, zoom in them, you can see that actually there was a well-defined profile and then it looks like a cell similar if you scale them, locally cell similar, it's a, so it's similar. And then if you're trying to track this maximum growth of U1 as a function of time at maximum growth of omega one, maximum growth of percentage of Z, you can, you can take a lot, the inverse and take a square root of the, the omega one maximum, you can find a very like a perfect linear uh, scaling that, that shows that the uh, both u1 and omega perseverance of z blow like a one over capital T minus T, but the vorticity omega one blow like a quadratically. So you can also, based on this fitting, you can get the predicted signal time, and based on that, you can actually. Uh, uh, that's how we get the, the, the different scaling, the self similar scaling. And the nonlinear alignment, it is here, the water stretching, the, the swirling played a very essential role. So the nonlinear, the, the U1, the right hand side is a two percentage of Z times U1. So you can, you can plot the cross section of uh, R and Z cross section percentage of Z and U1, you can see near the maximum position of U1, there's a strong alignment, percentage of Z, there's strong nonlinear alignment. So the water stretching behave quadratically. That's why you get the uh, one over T kind of blow up. So this is along the Z direction. So you can see the very strong alignment. So this is, and the R, and the, there's a two scale I mentioned earlier because uh, the, the, due to the total circulation conservation, the R square uh, has to, uh, can, can only blow up like a, uh, this has to conserve, total, total circulation has to conserve. And we know that the U1 blow up like a one over capital T minus T, they imply that the R zero 
string like a square root capital T minus T, but the Z0, the, the, the distance to the Z axis, uh, it is uh, uh, converged linearly. So they have a two scale. So, 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 so that's why if you're looking for a traveling weak kind of cell similar solution uh, uh, profile, and, and, and this uh, R0 and the CL, CL is like one here, it is like a square root, square root, uh, one half scaling. So then you can actually sh show that the, uh, by doing a, a scaling analysis, but it's not a conventional scaling analysis in the sense that the, uh, you have two scale, meaning that the, the cell similar profile have a multiple scale. So, so that is a non-conventional uh, scaling analysis. So, so you, you, if you do the matching, you, you match the, 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 the scale have the same order together, you get a linear relationship of the scaling exponent. There's one free parameter for the order equation, so beta between zero and one. So one, beta get one half seems to be co coincide with the computation result that we obtained for this particular regularization. In fact, I would like to highlight that the, uh, so this is the dynamic scaling equation by matching the profile because the traveling weight speed of R zero the center of the traveling way, the tornado, approaching the, to, to R equals zero. So that also introduced a singular scale. So it actually introduced additional, uh, very large exponentially growing transport term that you can either consider them as a Lagrangian multiplier, or you can think that they're enforcing an additional constraint of this equation, algebraic constraint. We believe that this is a very, uh, it's maybe the, the reason that we can get a stable uh, blow up. So you can see that the, uh, this constraint, meaning that the contour of the, the scale V, v which, which is the profile of U1, kept the omega C, the profile of omega one, they had to align with the stream function, okay, up to a scaling. So you can see that if we scale the velocity, the stream function, uh, because due to the, to, you shift the R equals zero into to the origin, so you have to introduce a shift in the stream function. You can see that near the front, near the, the single front, it's a very strong alignment of the, the contour of the U1, and the stream function, the scale stream function. The same thing, because both the vorticity and the stream function and the V, the omega and, and, and the U1 had to, to align with the same scale stream function, you can see the contour of the U, U1 and v omega 1 also parallel, had to align with each other near the front. So we only, we get a very strong confirmation that this cons constraint is very well satisfied near the front, but away from the front, it's not well satisfied. So in some sense, this is, we do not expect to have the exact uh, asymptotic cell signal profile. So that is a, a new phenomenon that we, we have not observed before. So at the end, uh, we, 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 we conjecture that the 3D order equation seems to uh, uh, develop a traveling way type of cell signal, as some locally cell signal profile, because, because we cannot say it's globally cell signal profile of this order. And we also did a similar computation for the now still equation, but we've variable coefficient viscosity that degenerate at the same point, at the origin. So you have a smooth visco uh, viscosity as a symmetric viscosity, but vanishing like R squared plus Z squared at the origin. So basically the singularity is still induced by the Euler singularity. We use the same kind of initial condition that we use for the 3D Euler computation. We observe the same quality uh, type of blow up for the Nash equation with a variable coefficient, but degenerate at the origin. So to summarize, so we, we I, I only go through went through very quickly toward the end, but we uh, we currently investigating a, a, a new type of a tornado-like singularity induced by the last war for both moon initial data, uh, uh, with finite energy for both 3D Euler and variable coefficient Maristow equation with a degenerate coefficient, but the singularity approach to the origin, unlike the one that I studied with core law in back to 2014. So it's a very different mechanism and much more difficult to compute because there are multiple scale and also have more instability because uh, it introduces a strong shear near the front. And I also reported that there's some uh, progress we make using the developer computer assisted approach to analyze the 1D HR model and also for uh, the, for this for smooth initial data we compact support and for the 2D BoostNet and 3D SSMH Euler we see one half of loss of fuel and finite energy. And, and I did not talk about here, we also use the same kind of technique to analyze the original Degagori model. Uh, and we showed as a finite time blow up for the, for the whole plane, for, the, for the, whole, 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 the whole wheel line. And we are currently uh, ch trying to, to generalize this technique, this computer assisted approach to, to uh, analyze the 3D Euler, as, as it's metric 3D Euler, 
be smooth initial condition uh, of the same type that the Golo and I study back in 2014. Uh, with that, I start with these some of the reference. Thank you. <laughs>